Good evening. My name is Lauren Poole. I had the privilege of being one of seven students chosen from our Year 10 cohort to be mentored by a PhD student on one of seven animal healthcare projects offered at the University of the Sunshine Coast. An opportunity I, as with many others, have not encountered in the past. I was enthusiastic to be given this offer. Not only have our projects given us valuable insight into the field of science, but the opportunity to contribute to authentic scientific problem solving and inquiry. My project in particular delves into the understanding of animal personality, the social personality of individual eastern water dragons to be specific. Interestingly enough, um, others involved in the project got to work with the cute and cuddly creatures of the world. I, on the other hand, had what I could say was the privilege of working with the eastern water dragons. At this stage, some of you may wonder what, an east, what eastern water dragons are. This is what they look like. They are tree-dwelling lizards that are part of the iguana family and are native to eastern Australia. They're 80 to 90 centimetres long, majority of which is their tail, that is flat on either side to assist with swimming. This one in particular caught my eye, as he is rather peculiar. From Judy to Francine, Loki and Delilah, you name it, we had it. One may also wonder, why use lizards? There's a common notion that lizards would not display distinctive behaviour, but it is much the opposite. In Eastern water dragons are highly gregarious creatures and display great amounts of variation in their behaviour. Who would have thought that a, an Eastern water dragon would be so behaviourally diverse, exhibiting baby behaviours such as submissiveness and aggression? Testing these behaviours requires a variety of data collection methods that help us understand why animals are social and why we see so much variation in their social behaviour. This is exactly what I did during the course of my project, and all with the guidance of my wonderful mentor, Kasha Strickland. This is a prime example of knowledge is power. Some of the greatest scientific discoveries throughout history have been derived from a question driven by the power of curiosity. For instance, Charles Darwin's theories on natural selection came from asking questions, questions that had the capacity to change science as we know it today and to inspire generations onwards. Knowledge provides us with understanding that gives us the capacity to do more. I initially went on this endeavour through my interest in behaviour and came out of this with this understanding and much more. This project has given me the incentive to ask these kinds of questions and be proactive on finding an answer, as well as uh, showing me my capacity as an adolescent. As my mentor once said, science is everything. Science is medicine, it is technology, it is understanding how things function. In a society where the science industry is booming and today's youth is tomorrow's future, there is a lack of opportunities given to experience the power of science. I would highly suggest programs much like this to be implemented in schools as the opportunity was a priceless. Thank you.